So joining us now to tell all of us about that, CEO of Mike Rowe Works, an executive producer and narrator of How America Works. That premieres tonight at 8 p.m., right here on Fox Business. Welcome, Micro, and good luck on your new show. Thank you. I'll take all the luck I can get. You'll be great. And why isn't America working? What is up with this? Well, I mean, the honest answer is a 380-page book. I can't get around to finishing. But I think the short version is we've got ourselves a dysfunctional relationship with work. Mm -hmm. The prevailing definition of a good job is in constant flux. And at mm. the moment, uh, it seems to be more narrow than ever before. To your point, opportunity is alive and well. Nearly 11 million right. open positions. My point, and the message that comes from my foundation most often, is the disconnect between education and that number. For instance, we're still ardently pressuring kids to get the four-year degree, and we're telling them if they don't, they will wind up among the disaffected, the unhappy, or the disconnected, or something like that. We're lending money we don't have to mm -hmm. these kids who are not going to be able to pay it back, mm -hmm. uh, to teach them for jobs that don't really exist anymore. In other words, jobs that aren't among the 11 million that are currently open. So what is it, $1.7 trillion in student loans? Yeah, the books? that's right. That's about right. So that's part of it. Right? There's a lot of money wrapped up into this, and because we have essentially marginalized whole categories of really important vocations, we've got a PR problem. We have stigmas and stereotypes and myths and misperceptions that affirmatively keep people from exploring careers in the trades. Mm. So that's what my little foundation in the trades, is. right. It's specifically the trades. I yeah. think so. Some of the uh, most unhappy people I know went to. Fancy four-year liberal arts schools for seventy-five thousand dollars a year. Either they or their parents who paid for it, or the loans they took out. Sure. And I mean, I have nothing against philosophy, but there's a limit to how many philosophy majors. But I don't even want to go down that road. That wouldn't right. be right. I went to one of those schools, so I'll, so I'll back off. Okay. okay fine. I'll leave that be. Here, have we devalued work? And I ask this in two ways. One is a cultural question. Mm -hmm. Have we devalued work, sure. which used to be the epicenter of the American idea? And two. Are we paying through these expanded welfare uh, entitlements or whatnot? Are we paying people not to work? Working backwards, yes, obviously. I mean, it doesn't take a college graduate to look at the chart and determine that getting paid $600 to stay home versus $650 to make little rocks out of big rocks, right? Yep. I mean, yep. people are going to make decisions in their own self interest. But have we devalued work? Yeah. But I think it's worse. I think, I think we've made it the enemy. Mm. I think in pop culture and in books and in portrayals on TV, we've made, we've made work the proximate cause of our unhappiness. Mm. And I don't, know that if, I don't know that we did that on purpose, but I think that work is, it used to be such a big part of our identity. Mm -hmm. And now if work becomes this thing that is making us unhappy, well then, who do we have to blame for it? Typically it's the boss. But in fact, it is a more inward look. So I'm not a shrink either, but my foundation has assisted 1,400 people so far, none of whom went to a four-year school. Many of them learned to weld, and many of them are making an excess of six figures right now with no debt. So I come back to this idea of, on a macro level, sure, we've got a dysfunctional relationship with work. On a micro level, you can still find individuals who are willing to show up early, yeah. stay late, yeah. learn a skill that's in demand. During the break, he said that very thing to me. He I sat mean, here and said, I'm 73 years old and I still do this, I mean six it. days a week. I mean it. I, I always did. Even when I was a kid, I started out my career at the Federal Reserve Bank in New York City, open market operations. But without boring you, I'm just saying, it, to me, it's a six-day work week. And when I worked in the government, in the White House, I used to speak to a lot of the young interns. Mm -hmm. And one of my key themes, again and again, was work hard. And when you think you're working hard, you still need to work harder. And when you think you're working as hard as you could possibly work, that means you need to work even harder than that. And then it's going to all work out for you. Look, I just believe that. Work is a virtue. Work is godly in my book. Work is, I'm not saying it's everything, but work puts things in their proper place. Work is good for families. Work is good for making a living. Work's good for me. Well, I wouldn't know what to do. If you look at it reductively, look at people who don't have it. Mm -hmm. We put them into one simple category. We say, oh, they're unemployed. But it's so much worse than that. 
they're lost. Uh, right. They're lost, right? And so uh, there's so much talk today about job satisfaction. And there's this narrative that's out there that says this is the way you're, here's how you get happy in your work, right? We say identify the thing that's going to make you happy. Then start borrowing money and then go through the process to get all the accreditations and degrees and then go searching for that thing. And then when you find it, if you find it, then you can be happy. Mm. If there was a lesson that you can learn from people on this program, mm. it's that many of them are very, very happy in their work. Right. But very few of them who are doing the kinds of jobs that we look at set out to do that job. They looked, in other words, for something else, opportunity. And then when they identified the opportunity, they found a way to get good at it. And then when they found a way to get good at it, then they became satisfied. You know how you get good at it? You just keep doing it. You are really a miserable son of a gun. Yeah, you, you? you know how you do it? You know how, you know how you become a good broadcaster, which I was not 20 years ago when I started? You just keep doing it every night. You know how to be a good writer? You just keep doing it. You know how to be a good welder? You just keep doing it. You get some help from people that know, granted, yeah, okay, sure. we can learn. And I love work. I just, next time you come on, I'm going to take, people working and people working hard are happier than those not. There's good academic studies on this stuff. You'll be delighted to know, I think, that the scholarships my foundation offers are called work ethic scholarships. All right. That's what we do. Micro, thank you. It's How America Works. It kicks off our new Fox Business Prime lineup that begins tonight at 8 p.m. And by the by, don't leave us out for heaven's sakes. Don't forget, you can still catch Kudlow every day as usual, Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. right here on Fox Business. And if for some reason you can't catch us at 4, well, just DVR. DVR the show so you'll never miss a thing. And you'll know that to save America, we should kill the bill and we should work very, very hard. Thank you, Mike Rowe. We appreciate it.